Hi, this is Jim Janessy. In this short video, I'm going to show you how to use PowerPoint as an easel to reduce the size of images that you might acquire from the web or you might take yourself. I'm going to acquire some images from the web here. I've just typed in Abraham Lincoln for an image search on Google. And let's just click the search images button. This brings me quite a few images. They all appear to be small size here, but that's just because these are thumbnails. Supposing I actually copy some of them. I'm going to click on one here. This is fairly small. Here you see 200 by 254 pixels. Well that's fine. I think what I'll do is save that picture and it's going to go into pictures but I think I'll create a folder for it. I'll do a right mouse click here in Windows 7, do a new and a folder and I'll just call this Lincoln. So by going into that folder I'm going to save this GIF file that way. Let's go back and pick out a few more pictures. Let's just guess at some that may be somewhat larger than that. Well, this is 400 by 500. Let's right mouse click on that. I'll save that picture. This name is different than the one that I already have in there. So I'll save that one as well. Let's see if we can find a really large one. We may have to go hunting for a while, but here's one 937 by 1024 pixels. Let me save that picture as well. And let's see if we can find one more picture. And this picture is of moderate size, but I'll take it also. Okay, here are our four pictures. What I'm going to do now is to get into PowerPoint, and I'm going to insert those four pictures all at once. So let's go here and I'm going to click on the first one, hold the shift key down, click on the last one, and insert. Now I get all four of these. If I click elsewhere, they are no longer grouped, but you see these pictures are all of different size. Supposing what I wanted to do is a collage where Lincoln is about the same size, that is his face is about the same size. I can do this and I can grab it at the corner and do something like that. So his face is about the same size there. In this case, let me just make that a bit smaller. Now those would look somewhat more natural because at least the face is about the same size. And it turns out this one, well, perhaps I'm not going to worry about that one too much. It's a little bit special. If I wanted to use it, I might do something like that. What I have here is a collage, that is a collection of pictures. I might want to make the background some other color or set it to black. With design, you could go to the background and you could come up with a solid color. Let's say this one. And now we have a solid color in the background. We could put with the insert a text box in here and I could say something like this or perhaps make the lettering white so that it would stand out on this background and perhaps a little bit bigger and maybe even bold. I can save this and let me set the ruler bar so it is always present just so we can take a look at it without me clicking on it. I can save this and it will save as a pptx file. So I'm going to do that. That means I can continue to edit this later if I want to. But in order to distribute this via an attachment to an email I'm going to go here and save as and down here I'm going to select from amongst my choices JPEG. Now that's an interesting thing to do because it's going to save the entire slide as one image. Where will it save it? Well let's put it back into pictures and let's put it back into the Lincoln folder. You want to do this and place it where you want the picture so that you can find it later very conveniently. Otherwise, if you're not looking where it's saved, you may not be able to find it too readily and then you'll waste a lot of time doing that. So here I'm going to save this thing as a Lincoln JPEG, but I don't think I want to do that. I want to name it a little bit differently so I can recognize it. 
So I'm going to save it. The question, every slide, current slide. If I say current slide only, it's just going to be a JPEG out there. If I say every slide, which I'll do this way, it will save every slide. In this case, the effect is similar, but the placement is different. What happens here is, if I say every slide, a folder is created, and in it, every slide has a number. If I say only the one slide, then the name that I gave to the folder will be the name of the slide. Anyway, let's do this. Let's right mouse click. Let's look at properties. Can't tell too much from this, the size of it, but this is rather small. About 60,000 bytes is going to be emailable very readily. Let's take another look, though, at the details. And you'll see the dimensions are 960 pixels by 720 pixels. This is really a very handy size. If I right mouse click on it and preview, you see one image here that is everything that I had on that slide. You also see that any of the changes I made in the size of the pictures comes through to this. So here I can collect up a group of pictures, make a collage, arrange them any way I like, size the pictures any way I like, and then produce out of PowerPoint just one graphic image. I'd strongly suggest you consider doing this for any types of pictures that you want to provide to other people to take a look at. If you do things this way, you'll find that you can readily mail these pictures and the recipients will be able to open them up. If you take pictures with your digital camera, when you do this, the pictures will come in very, very large. This kind of reduction is important for you to do because in most cases, the pictures taken by digital cameras today are so large, multi-megabytes, they're thousands of pixels wide and high. If you try to email those to people, you're going to overburden their email inbox. If you're not on a very high speed line, you're going to have minutes to wait to upload them. And the people who receive them are going to find it very burdensome to download them. They probably wouldn't download them because it would take so long, even if they do receive them. So keep this technique in mind for reducing the size of your pictures. There's an assignment, Project 2.2, in the CSC 200 class in which you're required to do this. And this little video is the step-by-step -step process by which you accomplish that.